Alrighty, in this tutorial we're going to be looking at is alert dialog or alerts. One thing I want to know is that there's there's some things in the Shocker library where you're like, is that this component or do I use this component or that component? Because there you have a lot of options to do very similar things. And so alerts, toasts, and some other things we're going to look at are pretty comparable depending on how you want to relay information to the end user. So it's okay if you're like, I don't know what to use or you get some of these components mixed up because the same still happens to me. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the docs and then it looks like we have two to three examples as long as nothing blows up on us. And so let's get to reading. And so it says an alert dialog component is used to interrupt the user with a mandatory confirmation reaction. So sometimes you want to have pop-ups happen after something has happened or maybe when a background process has completed. This is meant to interrupt the user and say, hey, I need about 350 for you to continue going on or something along those lines, right? Maybe there's like a token that you have where you need them to sign in again. And so this takes, uh, you know, seven things you're importing here and you're like, oh God, this is, here we go again. This is going to be a giant component, but really they're very easy to assemble. We have a dialogue that the header, body, footer, overlay, and then a close button. And I mean, how technical can some of these be? Uh, you know, we have a footer, the the content, a button, a close button, right? It's not a lot when you think about it. So if we come in here, we have an alert dialogue requires you to provide the least destructive ref props. So do not do not forget that. That's very important. And this is based on the WAI ARIA specification. So focus should be placed on the least destructive element when the dialog opens to prevent users from accidentally confirming the destructive action. So we have this delete customer here and it says, are you sure you can't undo this action afterwards? We have a cancel, we have a delete. Let's click the cancel, it closes on out. So we're coming into here now, never mind any of this hook stuff up here. We have a button. So we're clicking this and on click we're setting is open to true. Is open is a state, just as Boolean values, kind of just um, on and off, um, you know, kind of thing it's doing right here. And so we have is open is equal to is open. So this button is obviously toggling when the uh, dialog is open. And so we have this least destructive ref right here, which is this cancel ref. And so all we're doing right here is we're creating a use ref hookup here. And then we're just, we're hooking it up right here, least destructive ref, and we're using this here. So don't forget this step, because this is, this is pretty important. And then we have the on close, which is this functionality right here, which is, Basically, set is open to false, so it'll close itself down. So we have this alert dialog overlay, which is essentially like, I want to say the alert dialog is the parent wrapper, but this is almost like another parent wrapper, if, if you will. It's, it's, it goes over everything just after the dialog. And then we have the content as well which is kind of like the third one in order. So you want to go the dialogue overlay then content, then everything else kind of falls into place. And so we have the header, which we just are throwing a font size large, font weight bold. You could use the styles however you want to to make this you know look appropriate. And it says delete customer. And trust me, I'll click this again to point these things out. We have the body. Are you sure you can't undo this action afterwards? So this is still just more text coming on in. And then in the alert dialog footer, you notice here we have the ref, which is the cancel ref. So this is referring to this up above, which is also tying into the least destructive ref right here. And so when you unclick and cancel this, you close it off. And when you click delete here, you're also um, doing on close, but you may want to provide some other intermediary function that also does an on close, but beforehand, you know, deletes whatever it is you're intending to delete. So if we come up here and click, you know, we have the header right here, and then we have the body, 
and then this row right here is the footer, and then we have the cancel, which has the ref on it as well, and we have the delete. And then when we, you know, we click off or whatever, it closes itself. So, um, you know, we could think this right here. We're coming on down and it says we could also change the transition. So the modal comes with a scale or a scale transition by default, but you could change it by passing in a motion preset prop. And the set and set its value to either slide in bottom, right, or scale. And so this is coming in from the bottom, it feels like here. So slide in bottom, let me see. Yeah, so motion preset is slide in bottom. You could come in from the right or scale it, which makes it seem like it's popping out at you. But, you know, everything else here is, you know, they've changed, you know, some, some text up and stuff like that. But really, all you want to do is just look for the motion preset and see, you know, do I want it to slide in from the bottom, which it's still centered but it kind of looks like it's it's slightly coming up from the bottom of the center right here. Once again, it may not matter. Your users may not notice. This may be something you want to add in potentially you know, later on. I wouldn't stop your entire project for an hour to figure out if you want to slide in from the bottom or from the right. And then we have a bunch of the accessibility stuff right here. Make sure that, and you know, we're all at fault here, but Make sure your site is accessible as possible. I know Shocker does a really good job of baking a lot of that in for you, but you always want to test. And so we also have a bunch of other props here. Some we have covered, some we have not. Feel free to read, you know, ask questions, play around with them. And, you know, I just like to code. So uh, let's get to some of those examples. All right. So in this first example, what we're going to do is just create a basic alert right here with a button so i went ahead and gutted it out just because i wanted to test my snippets because when you make like a billion of them you sometimes come back and you're like what the was i thinking right so you see kind of what it's going to look like here so let's refresh this actually i probably didn't even save this over here no i did save it so uh i know what happened i updated my visual studio code here so let's get this running I don't know why it's doing that down there. All right, man, I really need to reconfigure my computer. Anyways, let's go ahead and start making the alert dialogue. We're going to get it set up and then going to talk you through the pieces. And then, um, yeah, then we have another example after this. So let's get to coding. All right, so we have this right here. Let's come up here to the imports. So we have the provider, the button, all this alert stuff coming in here, the dialogue, overlay, header, body content. And I'm gonna get to these hooks and function stuff here in a moment. So we have this button here, which is external to the dialogue. Now, some of the pop-up feedback stuff, you kind of nest the button, which you would see here inside of the 
series of components it actually gives you, this is not the case with an alert dialog. So what we have is the outermost, which is the alert dialog itself. It wraps everything else. The next thing is the dialog overlay. The next thing is the alert dialog content. Those are the three outermost parents. And then let me come in here and separate these out so it's just easier to see. So now that we know these out here wrap everything, here's our innermost kind of guts of this. And so we have the header, have some stylings in here. It's a large you know, font size, bold font weight, and it says sub to my channel, shameless plug right there. You're already here, you might as well sub, right? And so what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a header that says that, and then we're gonna see a dialogue body. And so it's gonna show you the text. In doing so, you will support a smaller channel. Who knows, maybe a couple of years from now, I'm gonna have someone look at this and be like, you have a, a bazillion subscribers. Who knows, but <laughs> I'm just doing this for uh, just to help people out. So then we have the footer, uh, which is a common theme. You have kind of the header, body, and footer, and a lot of stuff here. And then the footer at the bottom, which is where you typically store your functionality, we have the buttons here. So let's go ahead and do this. And we see sub to my channel. In doing so, you will support a smaller channel, cool stuff. We have cancel and subscribe. Either one of these, you you know, you click on that, but you don't really subscribe. You're gonna have to you know actually click on my YouTube yourself and uh, do that. We have cancel here. So let's go back, and we have this cancel ref, least destructive ref, and what is this doing? So we're creating a ref up here, and what this least destructive ref is doing is essentially it should, um, according to at least the documentation, it says, based on the WAI RES specifications, focus should be placed on the least destructive element when the dialog opens. So it's placed on the cancel, right? Uh, if we, we click on subscribe, maybe it's not subscribe to my channel. Maybe it's like, you know, empty your grandma, uh, your grandmother's bank account to buy Bitcoin, right? Uh, that would be a very big oops. So it's much safer to, in this alert dialogue, because you, you must 100% have a least destructive ref in here for this to do its thing. So once you have a ref, you hook it up to the spot in here that has the least crappy outcome if someone was to choose it. In this case, cancel is fine. You're back to where you started, right? Say, instead of describe to my channel, it says, give me all your money for Bitcoin because I'm, you know, a, a shady scam artist. Uh, cancel, you drop, uh, you drop out of there. Nothing happened, right? You hooked up the ref to the least, you know, junky output, which is what you actually need for this here. But both of them here close. So we have the subscribe, as we see. Click that. They're both hooked up to this on click up here. And this on close is coming up here and is setting the basically the state to false so the dialog doesn't open and you know this button is setting it to true right here so is there other ways you know i don't have to you know write an on close function here is there stuff that shocker provides for you to you know essentially toggle a hundred percent but you know no way is necessarily the right way there's just a lot of tools out there so this is how you make a basic alert dialogue. In the next section, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, center it a bit so it's at the top. So we're going to learn how to bring it down. And then we're going to learn how to do some of the motion preset kind of stuff. So everything is going to stay the same. We're going to add a couple more attributes. So I'll see y'all in a couple seconds. Alrighty, welcome back. So let's go ahead and do is centered. Is centered is automatically set to uh, true here. Otherwise, why do you bring in you know a property that's set to false, right? Um, <laughs> that'd be kind of, that'd be kind of a funny library if everything's just set to false. Anyways, we click this and we see now that it's down here, so it's centered vertically and horizontally in here. And this is a nice feature if you want to, you know, this is the best spot for your information to appear but maybe you don't want it to. In what cases would you want it set to 
you know, false here. Maybe you have something up here, right? Or you, you have your alert, obviously. But maybe down here or maybe on mobile, however, whatever product it is you have, maybe you have like a chart or a picture or an image or something that just happened that informs them that they need to make a decision to cancel or go ahead with whatever motion it is. So even though the centering vertically and horizontally down here is a really, really good idea for a lot of things, and I think it's very aesthetically pleasing, you have to keep in mind of what is behind this dialogue, and do you want them to, as in them as your end user, to review it one last time before they make a commitment? Because if they hit cancel, maybe they're buying tickets, right? And they lose their spot in line crappy experience right but maybe they buy their tickets and they bought them in the wrong seat right also a crappy experience so just keep that in mind another thing we could do is and let's just keep this in the center here is we could have motion presets so let's play with these here So we have none, we have scale, slide in bottom, and slide in right. So let's choose scale. So it doesn't look too special there, at least to me. Maybe you guys have better eyes than I do. Let's try a different one. So it looks like very briefly it comes in from the bottom down here. So if we do this again, maybe y'all could play this at like you know, a quarter of the speed and hear my voice sound all choppy. But it briefly comes in from the bottom here. The other option, I think the last one we have is slide in from the right. And we see it briefly comes in from the right here. These aren't, you know, make or break kind of things. I think a little bit of motion is good, but you also don't want to distract the user. But I, I guess, like I said, it all depends. If you just come in here and do, I think, none it just pops up and maybe to a lot of your users none and some of these other transitions will look the same to them especially on in their internet connection or just general distraction so don't get too bogged down in the motion preset fun stuff they have here but you can add that if you want a little bit more flavor and i guess pop to your website but these are the basics when it comes to alert dialogues have fun with them use them intelligently if you like what I'm doing, like, share, subscribe, slap the, the bells, likes, all the other stuff, tell your friends. I love making these videos, and uh, you know what? I'll see you in the next one.